Cool. All right, we're rolling. So right. uh, welcome, everybody, to another episode of Face the Truth. Um, this is uh, basically going to be my last podcast of the year with a guest. I might do one more before uh, the end of the year, just mm-hmm. like a solo thing. Um, but it's been an awesome year. Um, I think this is 55 or 56 episodes. So um, it's been an awesome experience, and I, and I hope to do a lot more. I've got a bunch of artists lined up for uh, 2020. Um, but uh, so anyways, lots of cool things happening. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about that probably in my next uh, solo thing. So anyways... Without further ado, uh, I just want to introduce my guest this this week is Peter Chan. I've known him for a long time. Yeah, uh, through, through schoolism, um, I've watched him uh, grow from a, a a little puppy into a, a giant <laughs> wolf, uh, if you will. <laughs> All right, thanks, and, Jason. Um, <laughs> and uh, he's he's an amazing artist, and I can't wait to get into it with him. So, everyone, please welcome Peter Chan. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks for doing this. Hey. Awesome. Yeah, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a while, man. It's been a minute. Um, yeah, for real. Uh, I don't even know yeah. how long I've known you. Like, uh, I think since around 2005 years? or 2006, something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> I think um, pretty much the beginning of uh, schoolism. Yeah, you were there. You and, yep. and Stephen Silver. Um, yep. Uh, so I think that would be 2007, maybe 2008, uh, something like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know. I, I remember the way I remember it is this: is shortly after I started, Bobby mm-hmm. made me come out with my first book. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, and that was 2007. Oh. But I think yeah. I started teaching in 2006. Like that's when I started. Oh, um, you started teaching. Yeah, no, for schoolism, I started like oh. putting putting my class together and all that. You know, mm. I remember Bobby like sent me that that old Toshiba. Uh, you could draw on the screen. It was like revolutionary. It was like, oh my gosh, yeah. you can draw on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a long time ago, but uh, but yeah, man, it's been it's been it's been a long. At that time, you were working with Schoolism um, full time, right? That's right. Yeah, doing mm-hmm. intern work and stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I think graduated at that time, pretty much. Oh yeah, I just got out of school. Yeah, um, me and Thierry, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was like really, really uh, beginnings. Mm-hmm. It was great. It was great. It was like we were all like living together. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was cool, man. It was a really cool thing too because at that time, like schoolism was such a new thing, um, and I just, you know, I just met Bobby and everybody, mm-hmm. so it was like this whole new experience. Um, and from my perspective, I had no idea what was going to actually happen, where it was going to go. So it's pretty amazing to like see where things have gone from there. You know, mm-hmm. it's crazy. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Have you been to the the studio, the new studio? I don't think I have. Yeah, no, I don't I, think I've seen you in Toronto. <laughs> no, no, I haven't. I haven't been yeah. invited back. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, I, I, um, <laughs> I, I went to. Um, I've the been workshop? to. Yeah, I've been to the workshop. I th- yeah. twice. I think. Yeah. Um, right. And that was amazing, man. I really enjoyed mm-hmm. that a lot. Who was in your group? I forgot. I don't remember. Oh. You know, I, I mean, I don't remember. I remember some of them. Like, um, I, I met uh, Brandon Gully. Um, oh just, yeah, mm-hmm. um, mm-hmm. and uh, he's like one of the only ones I've stayed in touch with, really. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, so, see. I see. But uh, but yeah. So you just got back. I'm curious. You just got back from uh, Bas- Art Basil or yeah, say, Art Basel, Basel, yeah. Basel. 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 Yeah. Basel. So, oh, how yeah. was it, man? Oh, it was crazy. Like, um, you know, you, you, first of all, everyone just knows <laughs> the Basel about the banana thing. Oh yeah, everyone just—that's the first thing that people think about. Um, but <laughs> art banana, but was, yeah. That aside, though, um, every it was like an epic experience. Like in the there, there's like seven, eight fairs at least. There's just so many different fairs. It's like you know you've been to conventions. Like yeah, uh, it's like almost like there's seven, eight different conventions happening at the same time, and. Um, Basel was just one of the biggest ones. It's like imagine if San Diego and uh, um, New York and Toronto, they all like kind of have their own thing and then all at once, which is like overload mm-hmm. almost, right? Yeah, it's so hard to see. And Basel is the biggest one, it's like a technically a giant mall of like galleries that set up there for like a uh, five days, four or five mm-hmm. days. Okay. Um, 
And anyway, I was there in the first day uh, for Basel. <clears throat> That's one of the reasons why I went uh, this year was because someone got me the, uh, the VIP pass for Basel so I could go in early so I could see like the opening, right? Mm. And then, so I went in, I saw the work and with my two, uh, three other friends and then we're walking around and then we saw the, the banana <laughs> on the wall. It was, we, we got the first thing, right? And then it was yeah. like, we're like, oh, wow, is this real? And it's like, first thing I was thinking, like, is this real? And then we were like, yeah, it is real. <laughs> and, uh, oh, crazy, you know? And then after that, the next day or two, it just blew up on the news. And we're like, yeah, it's crazy, yo. Like All that time you spend <laughs> on your oil painting and, and that's what gets the attention? Well, the thing is, um, I try not to think about it like that because, like, uh, like there's like in my own opinion there's like different categories of art like there's oil painting there's like uh watercolor there's like sculpture there's that one that category of performance art um and then there's all these other categories like you know so i don't know like personally i have never done that that work so i don't know like what is the background of it like i know that artists had a career like before yeah they did other stuff the sculptures actually did like banana sculptures and did this like other these other sculptures before that before that one, but he's known as a performance artist, not as a painter, not as yeah. a, not as a sculptor. So that's different to me. I, I, is there a category I wouldn't know? If someone told me, yeah, yeah, hey, how, how's <laughs> dance like or how's like music? I, how's being a singer? I have no idea. I never done it. <laughs> right. Yeah. So no, that makes that makes perfect I try not sense. To think about it like that. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think people like definitely went overboard with it and got. Um, I mean, it got a little bit nutty about <laughs> like a lot of people were upset about it, but I mean, overall, whatever it's, you know, it brought attention to, to the, the show. So, um, now is it similar to conventions? Like, we're do, like, can you just get a booth there or how does that work? Do you have to k- kind of try out to get in or, or are you invited or how does it work? So, uh, is the, the whole fair, um, like these fairs, at least from, all of them, the, what I know is they have, they're gallery fairs. Mm. So only galleries can, I guess, apply for a booth. And they can uh, uh, send, like, it's almost like applying to anything. They send yeah. what artists they want to show. And then after, if they get approved, they get in. Then they get a booth and they bring their artists that, that, that they're on, on the roster. Right? Oh, I Who, see. Whoever okay. they choose. But I think some some convent, some of these fairs they even have, um, you even have to send them like which artist you intend to bring, what kind of work you intend to bring. So that is the main thing. Um, like for fairs, there are the two, the two different kinds. There's the there's the artists independent fairs where artists can apply to uh, themselves and get a booth themselves, and then there are the fairs that only galleries apply to. So these are the ones that only galleries apply to. Yeah. Mm, okay. But everyone in I think in most cities, especially in Chicago, like you know, in Toronto, like these bigger cities, like um, usually there are fairs where artists can apply to. So there are, you know, two different kinds. And those are that's usually the, the fairs that artists can rep- self rep- be self rep- represented and uh, um, and they could get discovered by galleries, things like that. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I've always been curious. My agent for years has been trying to get me to go down there um and have paintings ready for i just haven't it's it's i i don't first of all i didn't really know that much about it um i've i've got several friends that have been in throughout the years and have gone um to just to the whole event you know um to basically miami oh okay okay. yeah yeah yeah. i've had a lot of friends that have gone and and had shown their work and stuff um so but i just never knew that much about it and my agent he goes i think pretty much every year and his mm. machine, he's like, yeah, you should, you know, he's like, let's, let's get you in there and show some work. But it's like, I haven't had the time mm-hmm. to, to do my own artwork anyways. <laughs> I'm not, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I'm not, I'm not, it's so funny too. Like I get asked that all the time. Like, oh, you should do, um, you should go to these events and sell prints and so, like what? Paintings of Trump? You know what I mean? Like what? <laughs> I, I do, I do a lot of illustration work, um, I don't know who wants a, a painting of Michael Bloomberg or, you know what I mean? Like, so I have, I'm happy uh, making a living doing, you know, doing illustration work and stuff. But, you know, a lot of the stuff I end up doing, it's it's like portrait type stuff or whatever. Um, it's not necessarily like 
art that I really want to be doing on my own. You know what I mean? Mm. Like for that, I kind of see myself doing, you know, more like oil and different things like that, uh, which I am working on slowly. <laughs> it's mm-hmm. a slow, slow you are process. doing uh, like a mix of stuff, right? The stuff in the background you have there is uh, oil, acrylic. Oh, those are oils. Oh, yeah. cool. The, the right. Johnny Cash is something I've been I started a couple of years ago. And I just haven't got, and really the only reason they're there right now is because I've got some junk back there. And I don't want people to see. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> blocking it off. Uh, uh, but yeah, no, those are both oils. Um, cool. But uh, yeah, the Johnny Cash. I'm hoping to just I want to just jump in and finish that one because I really like the the start of it so far. Mm-hmm. Um, but I have like a bunch of other paintings I want to do. You know, and I, like I want to I want to do. Um, mm-hmm. A series of again caricature type stuff, mm-hmm. um, but paint super hyper realistic with oils. Like I want to do. Um, I think it would be really interesting. Like you, you know, you know Robin Ely, you know his work. I'm sure. I don't think so. No. What? Robin. You yeah. Gotta, you gotta know his work. Go look it up. Yeah. Well, he, his names. Mm-hmm. He was um, on my podcast uh, like maybe two or three guests ago. Um, yeah. You, I think, will really appreciate his work. He's um, he's from Australia. He lives in L.A. right now. Um, an insane artist. Um, I, I, it's funny because I, I knew him as well from when we were both started. We both had the same agent, um, my first agent that I had. And um, and when he first started, he was so rough with his illustration. And he was just kind of learning how to paint. He was using acrylics. And his stuff was okay. And then it just... Mm-hmm got better and better so fast. I was like, mm. what? And then all of a sudden he decides to quit illustration altogether and just jump full speed into illust- into fine art. Mm-hmm. And he taught him, he's like, I'm going to become an oil painter. Mm-hmm. Didn't know anything about oil painting at all. And I remember him asking me the weirdest questions that didn't make any sense. And I'm like, wow, you really don't know what you're doing. And now he's like one of the best oil painters. I mean, it's insane what he does. His mm-hmm. stuff is like, so like he he does really really awesome conceptual ideas paints photorealistic, mm-hmm. um, yeah just look him up you'll I think you really dig okay. what he does. Okay. Robin Ely is his name. Robin and, Ely. Um, okay. Yeah. Cool. And um, yeah yeah watch the episode too I think you'd really enjoy it. But uh, is but it the anyways, last one? Um, sorry. Uh, a few a few ones ago or it was like I think four episodes ago. Okay. Or something like that. I'll look it up. Yeah yeah. Um, but um. The reason I brought him up is like something that I really want to do is mm-hmm. I want to do like my caricature. Like I have one I started of Bobby Lee. He's a, um, mm-hmm. a, a comedian, just a small one. And I like the idea of doing these like caricature type paintings with oil, but then really painting them photorealistic. Yeah. It, and it's different than when I do it digitally because when it's an oil, you're like, wait a minute. Because <laughs> like yeah. the digital stuff kind of confuses people already. Like they, they don't. They they always assume right. that you're just manipulating right. or something, <laughs> right, but if you right. can see it in an oil painting, then yeah, then it's sure. gonna be like what <laughs> you know. So that's kind of what I want to do, you know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, yeah. let's talk about you, man. Like I'm, <laughs> I'm so curious. I, first of all, um, again, like same thing. Like I remember when you were first starting and you were st- st- first started getting into acrylics and you, you you had you didn't know exactly where you were going or what you're doing. And I remember watching you <laughs> learn how to paint. Mm-hmm. And I went from that to watching these insane, <laughs> awesome paintings that you're doing now. And thanks, man. You know, no one works harder than you, man. I I, I, I follow your work. Um, I love your use of color. Um, Thank you. Your color, you definitely are not afraid to be bold and and mm. you know push it. Um, <laughs> that's probably one of my favorite things. But also, just your your overall ideas and compositions, like how you will you know. You know, put someone maybe in a bathtub or whatever kind of things like visually it's just like man and i and i really love what you're doing with texture too mm-hmm. it means a lot tell you so so what what's been going on with that like um i'm curious just like the i guess your drive behind it and what you yeah. what you're you know <laughs> aiming for and, and everything but I, I I love what you're doing. It's awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah. Like I think at the beginning, uh, what happened was, um, I had to make a a transition and start like, I had all these ideas at the beginning. I I kind of try to feel out. At first, it was just uh learning the medium really, like learning how to paint with acrylics, and then 
and then I went to oils and then I tried different surfaces like paper and then panels and <clears throat> and then I think it took like like two or three years to really kind of figure out what I'm what I even want to paint about you know what yeah. I you know what I want to do with what medium whatever um, how I want to work um, and and then it just there were some paintings that were like crazy hard challenges at the beginning and I'm sure you know what I mean. Like at the beginning, you just gotta hammer through, uh, the yeah. you know, do your time kind of thing, and <clears throat> and uh, um, and then I made a chart, and when I tried to figure out what I want to paint about, so I wrote down like, you know, things that I like, like the music that I like, or like um, the artists that I like, classically or contemporaries, whatever. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then I start to look at the list, and I'm like, okay, these are the things I like. These are the colors I like. Why don't I start exploring, you know, this direction? And the very be very beginning, I explored a lot with the, the classical sculpture stuff. You probably remember that. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, at the time, I really loved uh, pretty much any artist that had a lot of uh, um, form, <clears throat> like a three dimensional form, like uh, Berlini, Rodin, like those sculptors. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I like I ran wrote wrote out the list. I I wrote the, their names. <clears throat> and then like you know for painters i wrote like you know velasquez and you know um rembrandt and you know vermeer that was huge for oh, sure yeah, and, yeah. and then i just started to like try to think about how i could start you know how i could start like painting and what i could just as a starting point that's it <clears throat> and i look at even films like what films do i like what kind of films do i like and that's where i think i found something really uh for me, um, I found that I really like films that has a lot of mystery to them, like like a Kubrick films, for example. Um, and I, I wanted my paintings to have kind of mystery, you know. Yeah. So then, yeah. So I tried to create compositions and and pieces that have like a general aesthetic appeal, but then also have like a, um, some kind of a mystery. That's something that is potentially you know, hidden or something that is like that people can get deeper into, really. Mm. Um, and I painted like at the beginning. I remember I was I was painting after work. You know, remember, uh, like when I was working at that studio, um, I was painting every um, every day after work at Imaginism. And then after that, it became when Bobby and Kay did a show for friends. I would do a show as well around that time for the uh, another gallery. And then after that, we just painted together. They were doing, everyone found their kind of medium. Like Bobby was like into acrylic. Kay was into like gouache, watercolor. Yeah. He was like master at that. And then um, I would do like acrylic and then explore into oil. And then once I hit oil, it was like the pigments were so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I thought yeah. there's so much potential to to push this, to push the pigments. The saturation level is so much higher and and it's so rich. I think yeah. butter. And just like I couldn't go back after that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like it's it's funny because I, I I did a bunch of commissions recently. Um and the first one I did, I I was gonna I, I wanted to do them in oil. Um the first one I was like, you know what? Because I didn't have as much time as I wanted. So I'm like, I'm just going to do this, the first one. And I'll do the an acrylic. Because um, I thought, oh, I can paint way faster and everything else. And it turned out, like, well. Mm -hmm. But after that, I was like, I'm never painting with acrylics again. <laughs> it was a nightmare. Like, it was just, it was just so frustrating. Um, and I was like, why, why did I decide to do this in acrylic? This is ridiculous. Um, and then the next ones I started doing in oil. And I was like, oh, okay. Okay. Uh, you know what and again confirmed why i love oil <laughs> mm. it's just so much more uh workable and um <laughs> it's just not the same thing it's just it's it's i mean they're both you can do cool things with both of them yeah but, for sure yeah. but i think i think what i like about oil is that it seems like the potentials the, the potential uh for i mean it, there's there's not like really a ceiling you know there's, yeah there's you just, got it yeah you can go like so many directions with it yeah. Um, and I don't think that you will ever stop learning 
yeah. something. You know, it's it's just like I don't know. I always compare it to like like a, a painting with acrylics is like playing checkers, where painting with oils is like playing chess. You know, got to think a few moves ahead, and you can always learn and grow and yeah. get better and better and better. Yeah, um, yeah, acrylic. There's something nice about it, it the, because it dries so fast. Um, it does have its own thing too. Like it's, yeah. it could be cool for alla prima practice. Yeah, you know. Um, yeah, I think like I love acrylics too. I, I think it, nowadays they make some of the colors pretty good. Like the the richness of them is. It could be on par for sure, um, but I think the yeah. only thing is just the drying time. Like if you say like you painted a bunch of stuff on it, and all of a sudden you're like, "Wow, it's the same day," and all of a sudden you're like, "Oh, that edge, I could soften it." You can't, right? Yeah, exactly. You can't grab like a really soft brush and just go like put a soft. No. You know. Yeah, and the other thing that frustrates yeah. me with it is is the you know the fact <laughs> that it dries darker, and sometimes it takes oh, longer to like build it up. Where with oil, you can kind of just get it, you know. Um, but anyways, uh, enough with the nerd talk, Peter. Um, <laughs> yeah, I uh, <laughs> but uh, what, um, what's, what's been your technique lately with your work? Are, are you doing full-on underpaintings um, and then I, come in, or is it more direct? I always do underpainting regardless. It's just to me, I, 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 I tell people it's like a map. It's like a yeah. map you're painting. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, but these days I'd be more and more direct actually, mm -hmm. uh, before, I think just before this year, um, I used to paint like, what well, I would say four, three, four layers. Like I would paint say two layers and then of direct and then I would do a glaze and then I paint another layer and then do another glaze and then paint, finish it. But, um, when you say now, glaze, um, are, are you meaning <laughs> like, like, like thin out? Um, so, and like do like a wash over certain areas is that what you mean yeah. or, okay. so you know there's the in oil there's like medium and there's solvent right so yeah. uh, the glaze is usually using the medium mm -hmm. like it could be a little solvent mixed into it but uh usually just the medium mixed with paint and then so paint is thin down yeah and then you put a transparent glaze over it yeah no, I was just curious so, because I've seen <laughs> so many different variations of that um yeah clearly people do that yeah. on acrylic all the time to, as yeah. well yeah, and digitally too, right? Oh, like yeah. if you set a layer to like a gray layer or a brown layer on top of your digital painting, uh, if you do like a 20% opacity, that's like a glaze, essentially. So when you're doing a glaze with your oils, <laughs> um, what's your purpose uh, yeah. at that step? I want to create like a transparent film on it and then uh, so that there's more depth. So there's like the layering of the paint. When you uh, have a opaque, two opaque layers that you built up, you do a transparent glaze and then you do another opaque layer on top then you start to have these like the depth of the paint. I see. Okay. Yeah. There are Very some cool. opaque areas, some transparent areas, and sometimes it's just subtle. Like you could do like a form rendering with uh, a glaze underneath, and then it'll just, and then you can glaze on top of that form again, and then you paint uh, opaque again on top of the glaze, and then it just like create these like depth um, that. You know, when you look at some of those classical paintings in the museum, that you, sometimes you're like, whoa, how do you create this crazy amount of depth? And yeah, yeah. That glazing, right? It's gumbo yeah. glazing. That's very cool. And No, that, I, I mean, it's it's cool. That's that's why I wanted to ask you because there's a lot of yeah. people that are going to listen to this and not yeah. really going to understand what it is. So I just want to make sure we yeah, can explain right. it a little bit. Sure. Um, that's <laughs> awesome, though. That's um, You know, it's, I was surprised, too, that one of my favorite paintings uh, that you've done recently was the was the one of the guy um, with like the kind of teal green hair. Oh yeah, um, I just right. love that painting, man. Thank it's you. like, but I was surprised how small it is. Mm -hmm. I, I thought that was a big painting and it's <clears throat> like surprisingly small. Oh, that right. one was actually for. Um, it was yeah, it was like <clears throat> originally a painting for the. Uh, uh, for a video I'm making with Bobby, actually, it's coming out soon. Oh, cool! It's like, uh, we 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 recorded the whole thing. It's like a oh. time lapse. Yeah, oh, that's so great, man. Soon, up soon, yeah. And uh, from Very the beginning cool. to the end, we used the uh, a special easel, Strata easel, and then um, uh, we're gonna record a video about it. Yeah, that's so great, that, man. That'll be coming out. <clears throat> but anyway, yeah, that painting. So it had to fit that easel. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's why it had to be that size. Like uh, it was more like. Is it like a plain air easel or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You probably seen it, right? 
So it, what's, what's I think so, yeah. yeah. So it like fits kind of like inside of it while you're working, basically. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. You got it. Yeah. So, so is it like nine by twelve? Yeah. Kind of. Okay. Yeah. The painting? Yeah, it's eight by ten. Yeah, they... Oh, eight by ten. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's so small. Well, I know, man. That's that. That's an awesome painting, <laughs> though, man. That's a really. Thank you. Thank you. You know, yeah, I love it, dude. Like I, you know what? I'm not trying to like just not just because I have you on here. I'm not trying to like like kiss your ass or anything. But uh, in all seriousness, though, like. You know, there's so many artists um, that are, especially on Instagram now. I mean, it's it's insane. Like, I find new artists all the time. But your following your work has has actually been something that's I look forward to because cool. I'm Thank always you. like, oh man, look what he's doing. Because you're all, you're always pushing and doing something, um, you know, that's exciting. <laughs> I get to. Be, I, I guess what I'm trying to say is like, when you do art every single day for a living. Um, you, it's easy to get bored with art. Like, you know, it, it's hard sometimes to get excited about, like, it's not, it, it's hard for me actually to be like, oh, wow, look at how awesome this piece is. Cause a lot of times there's no mystery for me, you know, or it's just the same thing over and over again or whatever. <laughs> but when I see your stuff, I'm like, oh man, look at what he's doing. It's the color here and this and that. And so it's, it's like, it's cool. It's really awesome to see what you've been doing. Thank um, you, like I said, the, the my favorite thing I think is your the way you push color. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this, there's always something that's just popping, um, and for me, like I have a completely different approach with oil. Where <clears throat> like I, I pretty much I use a very limited palette. Zorn, um, right? Zorn, yeah, I guess it is pretty much that. But I mean, yeah. I I do have other colors <laughs> that I mix into it. But um, like I kind of bend color a little, if, if that makes yeah. sense. Um, yeah. but I, I don't really go for super bright colors, but like seeing some of your stuff makes me like, Oh, I should try doing some, <laughs> some crazy. Cause I just never, that's never kind of really been my aesthetic, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but maybe that's why I enjoy it so much, um, to look at. <laughs> but, um, when you're, when you're doing, uh, this kind of work, like what kind of palette are you, are you working with? Mm-hmm. Do you, do you pretty much work in the same palette all the time or are you just kind of exploring hey i i switch it up all the time like that's the thing for me like actually you kind of what you just said like uh just exactly pretty much sums it up like i you probably notice like i i probably i change like my subjects too and my my color and my approach every maybe year two years I, i would say about more two years like I change up the way, even the way I'm painting the background now is a bit different. I use the um, almost like the impressionist pa- palette. I mean, the impressionist like way like of uh, optical color mixing to create my grays now. So instead mm-hmm. of like a blended, like my backgrounds are not flat. It's it's flat, but it's like these little squares that are like yeah. you know optically mixing. Um, but um, I would say like color wise, I just I think. I go for like uh, storytelling, like what I need. If if there's an area I need a pop, uh, then maybe I put a complementary thing there, you know. Yeah. If there's an area I need to create a, um, less contrast, I put desaturation in there, right? right? So it it really just depends on what the painting needs and how I can make it work together. Um, That's cool because you, you <laughs> so you kind of have a, a spontaneous um, approach. Somewhat, right? yeah. 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 Like, like you, you're obviously in control of it, but you're kind of like, you know what? I think this might feel. I mean, I, I tend to do that when I paint digitally. I feel so much more freedom to just do something crazy with color. Right. Um, so that's 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 pretty awesome. Do you ever do that? Uh, like, do anything digitally in prep yeah. for a painting? I, I do. Yeah, like okay. a digital study, for example. Yeah. yeah. Some of my studies are like you know <clears throat> the way I see it. Like, you know, back in the day, uh, if you go to a museum and you look at like a retrospective. Um, you know, say early Rubens. Like I, we have a show in the AGO right now. It's early Rubens, and by every other every show um, in the museum, sometimes on, on a very specific painter, they have the finished beautiful work, and they have the studies, right? And then they have the drawings. So to me, like my studies sometimes are like the ones that done digitally. So and then I can just go straight to like the mm. the finish. Uh, yeah. on the on the canvas so i you know what people the goals of what people used to do to work out uh in the study is the composition color value composition color composition 
and the form rendering and how they like to organize their, their um, the light, right? So I'm technically doing that sometimes on digitally. I'm manipulating and moving things around. It's so easy to move things around, right? And then uh, after I set my kind of composition or my idea, then I go on the canvas and then I start like drawing the same thing out and try to change things around again and then finally painting it. Yeah. So, yeah, so it's like, uh, to me, it's like that. Sometimes I even, if I'm really unsure or not confident about a certain composition, how it would look on the canvas or how it would mix those colors, I would do a traditional study after that digital comp. Yeah. You know, and until I can really figure it out. But usually, the more, the as the years go by, um, like, you know, I mean, <clears throat> I'm sure it's the same for you, but as the years go by, you just become more confident about certain certain color mixtures. So you're just like, okay, when you see this cool red, you're like, okay, I know how to mix that with these two colors, right? Um, but be, at the earlier on, there was like every color I needed to like mix it and try it and test it. Yeah. Now yeah. I still do that, but, you know, it's a different way of testing. <clears throat> yeah. No, yeah, I mean, that's, it's it's funny too, I mean, that that whole thing, That's I think that's one reason why I enjoy using a limited palette because yeah. um, I... I I'm always blown away by what you can do with that. Um, yeah. And, and it basically when I'm painting, like I mostly am focusing on value and uh, temperature. So, um, you know, I need to warm this or cool this or whatever. I'm not mm. trying to make it look like, I'm not trying to mm. copy the photo, you know, like, yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. It, so, um, the limited palette's nice for that. Sometimes, like when there's just like way too many colors, I'm just like, oh, that's crazy. Like it's too many. Like, like I, I love Jeremy Lip Lipking. Um, mm -hmm. I love his paintings, um, and I watched him do a painting once, and I saw his palette, and there were so many colors on his palette. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, good for him. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. But uh, I just yeah. remember watching that, and being like, holy moly. Yeah, it's so many colors. <laughs> yeah, because at the end of the day, you could go crazy with the color, and all you yeah. gotta do is just bring it together with some desaturation right yeah yeah like you could completely go nuts with the variety of color and how many you have but and that would be like a lot but then if you bring it together with the grays right then yeah i think that's some of the most important part yeah. is that yeah you yeah. know uh, do you know my friend grigor grigor eftimov i don't know if you know his work not sure yeah um, he's another one you should look up, Grigor Eftimov. Yeah. He's yeah. an amazing oil painter. Um, he actually has his own school that he teaches here. It's a private school, and um, he teaches like basically master techniques. Mm -hmm. um, his paintings look like they should be in museums, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but he did a, a little study. He had a model in his class the other day, and he did a little study, and he sent it to me, and I was like, oh, man, that's awesome. Like the lighting was so cool. Mm -hmm. And I was asking him, you know what, what? What was your palette with this one? It's very. It looks very limited and everything. He's like, oh, it was just black, um, raw umber, and white, mm -hmm. and that was it. And it was just crazy. I'm like, how did you get that? Just, I mean, there was so many. There was it. I swear, there's more color in that painting, mm -hmm. but it's just from the raw umber was like his warms and his flesh tones. He was able yeah. to get mixing with the black and the white. It was just like, wow. Yeah. I mean, that that's just amazing, man. I mean, it made me want to do a, a, a study with just because I've never just done that palette yeah know. and but there's it, like different kinds of white and black too right like oh yeah yeah so they like there's uh, like there's so many different kinds of white and black and they all have different kind of hues to them like black you can go cool you can go neutral you can go warm it can go like all these different ways same with white right so, oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah oh yeah that's that's true I mean, it's it's i i <laughs> i, I one time i was doing a commission and um and I was I was working with my set palette, and then um, while I was working on it, this this really nice woman um, who has a connection with a, a, an oil painting company mm -hmm. sent me um, a bunch of paints, you know, to try out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, oh, I'll just you know, while I'm working on this commission, <laughs> I'll try some. So I remember like just trying, you know, squirting some of it out, and it it was really mm -hmm. nice, really good paint. I think it's called Rich Richardson's or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, really, really nice paint. It's, I think it's made in Wisconsin. Um, like mixes like butter. It's like so nice. But of course, as I start painting, I start realizing the black is so different than what I was using in my previous painting. 
Um, and it was like one of those things where you're like, oh, what did I just do? <laughs> I'm like, have to go back to, you know, it wasn't a big deal. It was only like a small little thing, but the, the, it, it changed like every, the whole color, everything changed mm. when I started using that black. It just kind of, it dried, dried differently, like completely yeah. had a different look. I was like, oh, that's not good. <laughs> uh, but that's why I say it's like more like playing chess. You know, it's, it's something, it's, it's not, it's a little bit more complicated. And I think also a little bit more, um, challenging and engaging you know i think it for me anyways it, it always makes me feel like i'm doing something exciting and learning something yeah. every single time i paint you know um i don't know that's it's, that's just a fun thing about oils are uh, also just with what you paint on you know like you, there's so many different kinds of surfaces that yeah. you can work on and yeah um what's, what's your all the time i switch it up all the time yeah like if, you, if i do a show of like 10 12 paintings you'll see like they're all different yeah yeah i do okay here's how i kind of think about it right now like uh like the one that you like the uh, the one with the green hair that one is a panel like a gesso board panel mm -hmm. uh i do that and then that was great um it's really smooth that's a yeah. smooth surface and then there is like that's my smoothest surface like gesso panel and then um i paint on paper Sometimes I like the ripped edges and I would like prepare the paper like I go crazy. I do like four layers of gesso on the paper and I sand yeah. it down and all that. Um, and then what, what kind of paper? So it's like Arches oil paper. Yeah. Yeah. And then okay. I would like, but I would prepare it like crazy. Like <clears throat> I would put like a, a layer of like matte medium on it <clears throat> and then I do like two, three layers of gesso. And then I sand it down a little bit and then to another layer of gesso and sand it down a little bit. So it's like a lot of prep, prep, but then the paper becomes really, um, really nice, the texture. Uh, and, and the paint sits really nice on it. On it. Yeah, it's really, it's really just extra protection too from the paint seeping into the paper. Yeah. Uh, and then I paint on like, uh, I paint on wood sometimes, uh, prepare the wood as well. And, I paint on a like linen, linen, and also regular canvas. So it depends on how. If if I'm painting, say, a piece with uh, a lot of texture, a lot of roughness, I would go rough. <coughs> like I would go for a rough texture to match the rough painting. So if it's like a a painting of some like dirt road, you know, I'll paint on on canvas. If it's a painting on like on of a portrait, like I want it to be fairly smooth, then maybe the smooth panel. Yeah. Yeah. And if it's something kind of like in between the texturally, then I'll paint on like linen maybe. Yeah. So it mix, awesome. I mix it up depending on like what I feel the extra, the extra material can help the painting too. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Yeah. It's some, you know, it's funny. Um, uh, another art, do you know, have you heard of Roberto Parada? Yeah. I think I've heard of Roberto. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. an, he's an awesome painter. He, I've had him on as well. Um, but he, he's like really, I love I love like his passion behind it too because he's like really into the whole traditional like he he will he he wants to basically make his own canvases you know he stretches his own mm -hmm. linens mm -hmm. and he uses the the thumbtacks and he he <laughs> wants it to be like you know um, I just think that's so cool everyone's got their I mean mm -hmm. I've had I've had so many I don't even know how many different oil painters I've had on um, this podcast so far but. Every single one of them, that's what's, what's so cool is every one of them have a completely different approach and a different, yeah. you know, like kind of palettes that they want to use and everything. It's, it's really fun. Yeah, um, exactly. There's so many ways to do it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's yeah. so many ways to skin a cat, yeah? <laughs> For real. Um, I've never tried <laughs> to, to skin a cat, but. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and you're, you're teaching as well, right? Yeah. You said something about you've been teaching. What, what's, what's been going on with that? Yeah, I mean, I teach uh, at the local uh, university here, and uh, at OCAD, um, and also at Sheridan, where I used to. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, Seneca as well. Um, so I do, like, a bunch of, like, classes there. Usually, some some I do, like, uh, the oil, sorry, uh, observational drawing, which is, like, uh, figure drawing, really. And I also do this mixed media class, like, you know, they go through like exploration of like ink, um, acrylic, watercolor, oil, surface, stuff I do, right? I would just, yeah. like one lecture could be like just how do you prepare like paper, you know? Yeah. Like, 
and and they've never done and, and you know if they're in a, there's a first year class so they've never done like maybe they used to paint on canvas but hey here's here, all these other ways you can paint you can paint on panels you can paint on paper how do you prepare that yeah yeah it's like That's so awesome. a lot of that kind of thing and, and it's crazy I, I love it because you know when i sometimes do a demo like on, on those on those materials they're like whoa i didn't you see in their eyes like oh i didn't know you could do that <laughs> it's like yeah it's great now you can do it and and then yeah. they start yeah or it's like a technique right like uh like you know like the like mid-tone ground you start with a mid-tone ground and then you build up the light you build up the paint that's one way it's not it's one of the many ways you can paint right and then but they may be not used to that. They just paint on straight white canvas. Like that's a yeah. common thing art school. Like, oh yeah, yeah. When they like paint on just, just like maybe a wash of something and then paint on white canvas. Well, it's doable, <laughs> but someone like yeah. you know someone you know who could be a la prima painter would do that, right? But then for a new painter, when they're trying to figure out learn about values, it's hard to just paint on a white canvas. Yeah, it's hard to tone the thing and then build the values. But, yeah, things yeah, like that. That is, um, that's that it is that's true. It's funny. I, I I typically hardly I can't I don't I don't think I ever start on white anymore. <laughs> right. I can't yeah. I can't remember the last time really I've done that. <laughs> um, right. yeah, exactly. You know you know Justin Kaufman though, right? Just uh, Justin uh, Coro. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I love dude. That, the guy's insane. Yeah. I, love I was him. I was talking with him. Uh, he was at the Lightbox thing in Pasadena, and we we're hanging out. Oh, sick. Yeah, dude. He. <laughs> He starts with he's got a white panel, and if you see those paintings with this insane paintings of trees and everything, yeah, a lot of that white, white you're seeing is just the panel. <laughs> so he starts in white then. Yeah. Okay. Well, there you go. There's and another he, and he'll leave it. White. He'll leave it yeah. like, like you look at it, and you're like, that is that the white of the canvas mm. or the board? It's it's. It's just interesting, wow. and then and then he'll do like some just real bold, just white dabs in certain areas where like, mm. that looks wrong but then when you step back yeah. you're like oh my gosh it's it's amazing oh, that dude uh, he blows my mind man yeah. dude his paintings are crazy oh yeah um but uh i was curious when you when you f were first getting into oil when you first started yeah. like i'm going to do this what was um like what were some of your influences with that with the material technique um, just technique like you know when you were like like artist wise like what were oh, you know okay, okay. like we like you know <laughs> Because you, you were kind of, in a way, self-taught with it, right? Like, you just yeah. started, you know, I'm just going to do this. Yeah. But I'm just curious, like, what your main influences were at that time. Um, a lot of it were, like, from, like, from, like I mentioned earlier, like, uh, uh, Vermeer. Um, I was actually looking up his process. I was like, yeah. I, I, dug, I dug very far, and then I found some, like, um, some sites to talk about the old master's process. I looked at, um, you know, Adrian Gottlieb, do you know? Uh, it's like, uh, Not sure. I know that he, is actually. he did this like process called Piambura and it's like about it's that mid tone ground. They build up the light and they build up the color. Mm. Um, I looked up like a bunch of those guys and then like Vermeer, Val sorry, Velasquez as well. And then Rembrandt, I try to look at their stuff and then I also downloaded like high res images of their work and I go to the museum and take a look at those um, and then <clears throat> after that I, I did go to <clears throat> excuse me I did um, this thing in uh, New York it's a Grand Central Academy it's like an academy process mm. you've heard of it right probably I think they're, sure. they're I mean I think they're, in, they're in Queens now I think Oh, okay. Is it? It's yeah. like a. It's like a more of like a private art school type thing. It's like a yeah. It's a private academy. You know those. There's all atelier. these atelier. Atelier. Yeah. Yeah. It's all like super getting into like form rendering. Cool. Yeah. Uh, and I think that's where I got really like uh, the tight part of it. Like I didn't think I could go that tight in certain areas of paint. Like I could go loose, but then I can go tight. And but when I get times to go super tight on the rendering on the form rendering. They took it to the next level, um, so I definitely kind of learned something there for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. It, it, it's like just like here and there, to pick up little pieces, you know. And yeah. then from <clears throat> and then from composition, I actually learned a lot of lot learned a lot about composition from film film studies, you know. Uh, and a lot of you guys, like I know a lot of like people do that, like you know, uh, 
Jace, uh, Jesse, Jesse Winchester, you know, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like he's yeah, all he's into the, the film study. He does a lot of those, right? And mm-hmm. <clears throat> I think he learns a lot, like, you know, from color, composition. It's like, but a lot of people, like, really, like, get a lot from film studies. And I yeah. did a, a lot of film studies, too. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. yeah that's awesome, man. <clears throat> Because you learn a lot about not just like the paint, like the the aesthetic, but also how they compose the mood. Yeah, the lighting, the mood, color design, um, all that value design, and that's like huge for that. That was a huge like uh, thing for sure. Oh so, yeah, no, so, that's you know, that's amazing. So breaking it down is like category of form rendering, and then category of like tonal design and color design from film, and then like you know, um, you know, looking at like narratives from film and from like masters like you know Velasquez Vermeer and then thinking about emotion emotion of art like from um, uh, Rodin and from Bernini and from mm. um, even like Kathy Kowitz do you know Kathy Kowitz I'm not familiar no oh she's amazing you, you, you should look her she is um, she's this like uh, Drawer. She does a lot of drawings. She's more of a drawer. She doesn't really do make paintings. I think just drawing. And then she has these really strong emotion in her work. It's so powerful, actually, emotion-wise. <clears throat> and the drawing is super strong. Technically, it's great too. So yeah, I get a lot from these people too. Like so, I look at, I think about categories. Okay, what I want to learn about, like, do I want to learn about like color design? Do I want to learn about emotion and art? Do I want to learn about like composition or storytelling narrative? And then I try to find the a source that I can get it from. Yeah, that's try. That's great. Uh, yeah, that's how that's you should great. approach it. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's really cool. Well, uh, there's a segment of my podcast that's um, uh, something that's really important to me, and it's called Serious Questions with Jason Seiler. Okay. Okay. And this is a two-part question for you. We're not First, serious yet. <laughs> Yeah, very, very serious. Okay. The first part of this question is, what makes Peter laugh? Oh, wow. Okay. Is that serious? Yeah. What makes me laugh? Huh? <laughs> wow. Something really bizarre, maybe. <laughs> when I see something really bizarre, like seeing... Seeing something um, <laughs> unusual, I guess. Maybe something that catches you off guard a little bit. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> I can't think of it. It's just so random. I don't think about this, you know, at all. Like, <laughs> normally. That's why I like. That's why I like that question. Oh, but you know what? You know what makes me laugh? I like those. Like those. There's these uh, YouTube talk show, and when someone does something really outrageous, really crazy, you know, like. Uh, I watch this like sports. Uh, uh, I, I'm into I'm into basketball, right? And uh, and then when I when I watch like uh, you know those talk shows after the games, there's this yeah, like, yeah, yeah. show I watch called Un, Un, Undisputed, and uh, this guy just uh, this this guy hosts uh, Shannon Sharp, super funny. He's always oh. like he's really funny, and yeah, that makes me laugh all the time. When I'm in my studio, I'm painting, and I hear him talk <laughs> about his things, and I'm like. Like, I'm like laughing my ass off sometimes. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So things like that. It's just like funny shows and really, really outrageous things. Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> and the second part of this is what what is Peter afraid of? Afraid of, huh? Hmm. I'm afraid of like, you know, my uh <clears throat> sometimes dropping my canvases. <laughs> <laughs> like dropping my panels and canvases, I hate it. You know, I'm always like, when I'm holding my panels after I worked on it for like, you know, weeks, and then like I'm like, oh shoot, like it's a wooden panel. If I drop it, it's like this whole canvas is like, it's dented. You know, I, I it happens like a few times, and I yeah. have to like go fix it. I hate it. You know, but I'm always like <laughs> carrying it around. It always like kind of, kind of makes me worry. <laughs> I don't know if that's afraid, but it's more worried. But, but, uh, hey. but you know. Your your painting like, your paintings are like your babies, you know. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, that's funny. I, my friend Grieger, he um, he told me recently he'd finished this this painting that he spent a long time on and just turned out beautiful. <laughs> and um, 
he uh, I think it was a commission as well, and he he sat it down um, on this chair, you know, <laughs> and um, one of his students came in and sat on it, like oh my God. they weren't paying attention. <laughs> they just sat down, and he was just like. Yeah. He he was. Just, I can't imagine how angry he was. We had to like, you know, repaint a whole bunch of it, and it's just like, oh my gosh. Um, but anyways, that was serious questions with Jason. Oh, Silent. and I'm afraid of. Uh, I'm afraid of oh. like people hitting my bumper. You know, like <laughs> I've I've been hit before from the you know, from from the front and from the back. Like when people like back out, or when I you know. <laughs> When people, oh, I'm slowing down at the stop sign, and someone, I've been hit a few times before. So ever since I've been hit, you know, every time someone gets close, I'm like, oh man, like I hope they're like braking properly. You know, <laughs> I'm always pretty paranoid with driving. I think because because oh, yeah. you know that's they call it defensive driving, yeah, right. So I'm like extra defensive all the time. I'm like, oh yeah, no, dude, that's, that's actually like, in Chicago too. That's a thing, like. <laughs> um, Especially when it starts to to be, you know starts to become like winter time around here, yeah, um, sure. I'm fine with it, but I don't trust other drivers in the city, and I'm always yeah. worried about that. Like, because people don't slow down enough, and they start to right. slide up, and like you're gonna smash my car, man. Like, right, I know. Oh, that that does worry me, man. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, dude. Like, I actually recently had the the craziest thing happen. Um, well, it wasn't it's not the craziest thing, but it was I wasn't driving recklessly or too fast, or it wasn't even like crazy weather i was going i was exiting on a on a loop exit and as i was going around the corner on this loop and by the way on the side of it was just like straight down so if you went over it you are seriously in trouble mm-hmm. and as i was going around this corner my car just started sliding like i was like i hit ice or something it just started sliding yeah. like i'm going i'm going off I like know. and then like suddenly really... i i was able to 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 stop it but it was one of those things where you're like what just happened like it was it was i wasn't going fast it was like i didn't I hit know. ice it's like, pretty what? scary right yeah i, I was yeah. pretty freaked out i'm like what i that don't that doesn't even make sense that it was like hydroplaning right. yeah kind of but there was no water there was no- i know <laughs> like last year i had this really scary in- like incident where like uh it was like icy roads one day at night and i think i I was going at a certain speed. I didn't know how how icy the roads were. Yeah. And then when everyone started breaking, I was like, what's going on? Why are everyone breaking so fast? And I see this truck that hit somebody. And the truck, like, stopped. stopped. And then I'm trying to, like, break. But then I'm <laughs> sliding. Me. Right? Yeah. And I'm, in front of me is this truck. So I'm like, holy crap. So I'm, like, changing lanes. And then, and then like, I hear this other car hit another car. I'm like, holy crap. It's going crazy, yo. So yeah. I was like freaked out. I was like, holy crap. I was like, really close call, you know? Because I, I remember there was like a sliver of like this like lane that I went through and then there's some other car hit another one. So it's pretty crazy. Winter driving is definitely scary for me, yeah. Oh, yeah. And you're up, you're still up in Toronto. So, yeah. I mean, like they're, they have, you guys have crazy winters too. So, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I don't like it. It's the worst time of the year, especially for yeah. traveling and everything. For sure, yeah. But um, anyways, there's a, there's a few people that did some drawings of you, so I wanted to show you that before we ended this. Yeah, that was good. So um, let me uh, let me switch the screens here and let me know if you see this. Okay. <laughs> That's so Oops. funny. It's like a Oops. bird. It's weird. I don't wow. know why. Wow, it's got paint. It's got a bird. There you go. It was showing two at first. Uh, yeah. So this is the first one. This is by uh, Walid uh, Shihab. Yeah. But yeah, I thought this was pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's very interesting. I was like, well, I don't know what's going on here, but uh... it's like a fantasy fantasy world. <laughs> yeah, it's like a bunch of uh, the, your favorite things: the paint, yellow and blue. I see. Interesting. Yeah. He's got a butterfly, <laughs> um, a palette knife. Yeah. <laughs> and he uh, he also did an, another one. Um, right. Oh, this is the same so artist. A, yeah, same artist. He did two of them. Oh, okay. So. Um, and I think there's only a couple this time, yeah. so I think this will go quick. Um, this one is by Ari uh, Van Vanderwist. Vanderwist. Nice. Um, this is. Oh, I think I think that the the hair is actually your brush. Okay. At first I thought oh, you were just I painting see. your hair, but I think that I think yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this is uh this is how you uh, do your hair every day. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, that's that's funny. That's great. Nice, nice drawing. <laughs> and uh, this this is the last one. This was by Jason Williams. Cool. Um, yeah, it's really cool. Um, here, we'll just interesting. We'll... They really they like to exaggerate. They really exaggerate the long face. That's that's like yeah, definitely something. Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> Now you can uh, go and uh, have some therapy. Um, are we back? <laughs> Thank you. you Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So now you can like be like, what? This is what people think of me. Um, <laughs> they got so, me. Uh, time, yeah. 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 <laughs> <Got a long-face. laughs> face. Long um, face. So uh, yeah, before we before we get going here, is there anything um, that you would like to kind of promote and push, let people know about with your What's currently going on? Any new shows coming up or anything like that? Yeah, I have a show up, up right now in Toronto. <clears throat> um, you know, with shows, is, is tricky. Only is pretty much if you're in the city, right? You can yeah. see it. But I have a show right now in Toronto um, until December 29th. Uh, it's called Ideals and Traditions. And it's at Mark Christopher Gallery um, and 55 Clinton Street. And that's up until, yeah, the end of the month. And then after that, in Jan- I mean, next year, I'll have a show in Montreal in Gallery Yoon late, later in the year. Um, and yeah, just pretty much you'll see everything on my Instagram. Uh, or yeah, definitely uh, follow uh, follow everyone that's watching and listening to this. Follow his Instagram. His Instagram is awesome. What, what, what's the Instagram again? It's, uh, Peter Chan- it's at Peter Chan Art. Okay. Uh, so it's just my name and then Art. The awesome. End. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. I was talking to my daughter yesterday, um, my 16 year old. Uh, I was like, "Oh, I'm, she, I was just—I don't even know how it came up, but I just said I'm doing a, a podcast with you." T- yeah. and so I showed her your work. She's like, "Oh, let me follow him." So I'm like, "Oh, <laughs> oh right. wow." And okay. How old's your daughter now? She's 16. Oh wow, yeah. that's. Fine. Yeah. Do you remember that? One? I, I think we all went on. I took you guys to a Chicago pizza place. I remember that. Yeah, I think I she was only that. three or something like that. Oh my God, that's really time flies, man. Yeah, yeah, I remember the deep dish. Yeah, that's my first experience with deep dish with you guys. Yeah. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we stopped by and picked her up. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, and she was like, yeah, only three years old. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, things have That's changed. Crazy. Now I have a, a two year old. Another oh, so wow. Congrats, started yeah. all over again. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like challenges in my life. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We all so, do. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, hey man, uh, thank you so much for doing this. It was awesome to catch up with you, man. And uh, yeah, I love, thank love you for talking having. art with you. Um, yeah, always. And uh, yeah, we'll have to do this again sometime, man. And just uh, everyone that's watching this, Definitely follow uh, Peter's work. Um, he's an awesome artist, and um, make sure you you give him a follow and uh, uh, give him a hard time on you know in, in the comment sections as well. So, <laughs> so. Right. cool, man! Thanks for so much for doing this, and uh, oh, thanks for having me. Yeah, yeah, we'll talk soon, man. Yeah, all right.